Benzodiazepines are a sedative class of drug which pose the risk of extreme side effects and withdrawal. These drugs are prescribed at about 66 million doctor's appointments in the US every single year. This means that for every 100 visits to the doctor, more than a quarter will result in a benzo prescription. And although they're designed for short-term use, many will remain on them long-term. Most will know these drugs under the name of Valium, Xanax, Clonopin, or Ativan. Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition, and in today's video, we're gonna look at some natural ways to help overcome benzo withdrawal. But first of all, let's examine what benzos are, and let's look at how withdrawal plays out. Benzos have a sedative effect on the brain to promote relaxation, sleepiness, and calm. For this reason, they are often prescribed for sleep problems, anxiety disorders, muscle spasms, and other conditions of this sort. However, tolerance to these drugs can develop rapidly and they can be notoriously difficult to discontinue. For many, it's known to take several months of weaning and detoxification and extreme withdrawal side effects are very common. Withdrawal can result in a host of symptoms which can be utterly debilitating for some, and in some cases, fatal. The most common of which are insomnia, agitation and restlessness, severe anxiety or cognitive impairment. One most recent example of benzo withdrawal is the well-known Canadian psychologist Dr. Jordan Peterson, who has described his harrowing experiences in detail since recovering. No doubt, these drugs are some of the most difficult to stop taking, and fortunately there are several things that someone can do to support this. However, to know what to do, we must first have a basic understanding of how benzos work inside the brain at the molecular level. In a simplified way, it ultimately comes down to two systems in the brain. On the one hand, the GABA system exerts a calming effect on the brain by inhibiting neuron activity. On the flip side, the glutamate system does the opposite. Following its release, glutamate binds to NMDA receptors on adjacent nerve cells to enhance stimulation or nerve cell firing. In contrast, GABA binding to its receptor counteracts these effects and prevents nerve cell firing. Benzo drugs work by taking advantage of this latter system. Through binding with a portion of the GABA receptor, they inhibit neuron activity, and this is basically how they achieve their calming effects. In the short term, this can be useful. However, chronic usage evokes structural and functional changes in the brain, which render them less effective over time. The brain essentially compensates for this by downregulating its own GABA system, and simultaneously, it enhances the opposing glutamate system in an attempt to maintain some balance. Not only do these drugs become less effective over time, but the major problems begin to occur when someone attempts to withdraw. In fact, many of the strong withdrawal symptoms are thought to originate from an overactive glutamate system and an underactive GABA system, all because of the brain's adaptation to the drug. The brain becomes hypersensitive to stimulation and loses the ability to calm itself. The goal then for any therapeutic approach is to attempt to rebalance this system of GABA and glutamate in the brain. In other words, this means reducing excitation and promoting inhibition or calming. This can be done with drugs, but sadly, many drugs also have significant side effects. I mean, there is no doubt that anyone who is attempting to withdraw from long-term benzo use, it's gonna be extremely difficult and should always be done under medical supervision. But for the purposes of this video, there's a lot of research which has demonstrated positive effects using natural substances and nutrients for addressing the exact problems which are present in benzo withdrawal. So I've prioritized five potential therapeutic solutions for enhancing the GABA system, all of which work through several different mechanisms. There are also a few different ways by which we can dampen the glutamate system and reduce excessive stimulation. First of all, one area of research which has received the most attention is on the protective neurosteroid hormones. Neurosteroids modulate GABA reception and were shown to abolish benzo withdrawal symptoms in animal research. Probably the most important steroid for this purpose is called allopregnanolone. This is made by the body from a precursor called pregnenolone, which is subsequently converted to its precursor, progesterone. Importantly, this neurosteroid is depleted during chronic stress and inflammation. Taking the base precursor pregnenolone is known to enhance allopregnanolone in the brain, although it also can go on to produce other neurosteroids which might not be useful for the purpose laid out in this video. Therefore, I don't recommend taking pregnenolone. If you can find allopregnenolone, although it's a drug, it is available via certain means, uh, this could potentially be very useful. 
However, it's not going to be available to most people. So in that case, I recommend using a different nutrient instead. Palmitoyl ethanolamide is a molecule derived from fatty acids, which has consistently been shown to increase allopregnanolone levels in the brain. Therefore, it could potentially be used to increase this level of the neurosteroid. Next up, and perhaps the most impressive of them all, is agmatine. I do have another video on this nutrient's utility for a condition called fibromyalgia, which goes into a lot more detail. So you can find the link to that video in the upper corner right now. But in short, agmatine was shown to completely abolish benzo withdrawal by by blocking NMDA receptors, reducing glutamate levels, and enhancing GABA. Unfortunately, this nutrient was banned for no good reason in Europe and the UK, although people can still source this from the US. It does need to be dosed between 1 to 2 grams for optimal effect. Another nutrient is a form of vitamin B3 called niacinamide, which has in fact been used by many alternative medicine doctors for the purpose of benzo withdrawal in the past. Much older research, particularly from Russia, discovered very interesting properties of this nutrient, which are similar to benzodiazepine drugs. In its active form, it can activate GABA receptors and prevent GABA uptake by neurons, thereby increasing GABA's effects. Furthermore, it may also enhance the clearance of benzodiazepine drugs through the liver. Melatonin exerts similar actions and has in fact been posited as a novel way to facilitate benzo withdrawal. At the very least, it can manage the insomnia, which is one of the most frequently reported symptoms among this population. There are four medicinal herbs which really stand out in their ability to rebalance the brain, specifically in this context, and should therefore be considered as top priority. Magnolia contains phytochemicals known to increase GABA receptor sensitivity and has been used to counteract seizures. Likewise, passionflower exerts calming effects and has even been studied for the purpose of benzo withdrawal. Another herb which has been studied is valerian, shown to improve sleep quality in people coming off of this drug. Finally, a herb coming out of Asia called kudzu was shown in at least three studies to enhance the GABA system, and what's more, it likely achieved this through enhancing the levels of allopregnanolone. Another way of improving GABA sensitivity is through supplementation with the amino acid taurine, which is well known to modulate the GABA receptor and has been thoroughly studied for these effects on the central nervous system. And last but not least, we have magnesium. Whilst there's only been one study using magnesium for benzo withdrawal, Magnesium works to prevent the release of glutamate and block the NMDA receptor, which is one of the main ways by which it can calm down the brain and protect it from excessive stimulation. It's also worth noting it's been heavily studied in neuropsychiatric conditions with similar imbalances. So just to reiterate, coming off benzodiazepines is going to be extremely hard. It's notoriously difficult and there's a high relapse rate. It should always be done under medical supervision. But for the purpose of this video, I've discussed some medicinal substances which show great promise in supporting people through that process. They don't necessarily take the place of drugs, but there's good reason to believe that they could be really helpful for certain people. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe, share it far and wide if you enjoyed it. Um, if that's all, I will see you next time.